Objective 9.7b. Explain how some energy is transferred to less useful forms at each trophic level, and that this affects the number of organisms at each trophic level, and limits the length of a food chain, and determines the shape of a pyramid of biomass in an ecosystem. Now the energy that organisms need all comes from the sun. Each year across the whole earth, photosynthesis captures three times 10 to the power of 20 joules of energy, which is then stored in the plant biomass. And then this energy can be passed along a food chain. It's either converted to other forms of energy or it's lost to the environment. Here's an example of a simple food chain. We've got the grass, grasshopper, frog, and bird. The plants convert that sun's energy into food, and therefore they are called the producers. And the arrows in a food chain indicate where the energy is going. Each level of a food chain is called a trophic level. So for example, this food chain has four trophic levels, and we give each trophic level a name. As we've just said, the plant is the producer, then we have the primary consumer, it's the first organism that consumes, the secondary consumer, and the tertiary consumer, or the top predator of the food chain. In an ecosystem, you have to have certain things. You've got to have producers, you've got to have consumers. We also have to have decomposers, which are going to be bacteria or fungi that decay dead material in order to recycle the nutrients. And we need our physical environment, which includes all the non-biological components, the abiotic factors. So this image here shows how a typical food chain would fit in more broadly into the ecosystem. You can see we've got producers, we've got consumers, and they're gonna make up a food chain. We've got the decomposers in the, in the soil, and we've also got the abiotic factors. Now herbivores are animals that just eat plants. So in this food chain, it'd be the grasshopper. And carnivores are animals that eat other animals. So in this case, it would be the frog and the bird are both examples of carnivores. Now in reality, you don't just get one food chain in each system. You've got many food chains and they all interlink and overlap to form what we call a food web. <laughs>